Art teachers of Reddit, what's you draw anything you want story? Not my story, but seems to fit here. When I was in school to certify to become a teacher, we had a former principal as a professor for one of our courses who was trying to illustrate how difficult it can be to manage parent complaints and how to approach those situations with administration. His example was how he had been called into a conference once with an angry mom and the elementary school art teacher. The mom was furious because the teacher had asked the children to close their eyes and draw whatever came into their imagination. His assumption was that a student had drawn something inappropriate. Nope. The mom was mad because summoning an image in one's mind was witchcraft. Summonus Imagius. I've had some really funny ones but this one is not and reminds me whenever I think of it to consider kids circumstances. I worked in a low income high immigrant population school. This girl was amazing. Outspoken. Kind. Great grasp of English. She drew a picture of her brother and her. I asked her who else was in the picture since there appeared to be part of a third person she calmly replied that's my brother's head. He was killed in our village right before we went to the refugee camp. I looked her up and down and say something sympathetic. Masking my horror. Yeah they came into my village grabbed all the boys and were going to take them away. My brother and his friend tried to run so they cut off his head. I was standing right there. Would you like me to draw you a picture I said no thank you. I asked where her little brother, also in art class was, when this happened. Oh we dressed him up like a girl. He makes a cute girl I should mention before the above exchange we were talking about one direction or something totally banal. I was a K-12 ESL teacher and worked in schools with high refugee populations. It was heartbreaking to hear some of the stories of the traumas they experienced, and like yours, it would come out at the most innocuous times, usually through drawing or writing. It's not drawing but I gave my high school kids a poetry assignment. They could write about anything that was school appropriate and have one curse word that wasn't a slur or the f-bomb. It had to include so much figurative language. Act. Girl turns in me's. My name. Is a bee. A poem about how she's tired of writing poems and that she's annoyed with me for assigning so many. Includes all requirements. I have her a 96. A few errors. And the next poem she writes is me's. My name. Is a cool bee about how she was sorry she was mean. Solid response. Sometimes the only way kids feel comfortable airing their grievances is through their creativity. I just remembered. A poor little guy who drew a self-portrait. He drew with meticulous detail and when it came down to drawing his pants he drew the zipper so carefully but it looked like a penis. I was flummoxed about how to tell him that people might see something there that he didn't intend. I got in trouble once for drawing a pooping butt. Little did my teacher know, but the drawing was actually a poorly drawn butterfly that ended up looking like a hairy pooping butt and when asked why I put the details I did like the legs and antenna and proboscidea coming off the segmented body. I said I dunno, don't they all look like that? I saw one a recess and thought it was pretty and wanted to draw it, thinking of the butterfly of course. Uh, nope, I ended up having to see the school counselor. Never assume what kids are trying to draw, always ask. High school 1977, not a teacher, while everyone else was drawing Pink Floyd rainbows and peace signs all over everything the biggest burnout in the class made a wide metal bracelet with intricate triangular designs cut out of it. He turned it in and got a great grade for the first project he ever bothered finishing and some well deserved praise for his effort. Teacher handed our work back and first thing he did was grab a pair of pliers and bent all the triangles outward making it a thick metal spike bracelet. I found that devilishly, disturbingly clever. A lone punk rocker in a sea of hippies. I have a design your own monster Halloween lesson. Most kids draw cute ghosts or cool vampires. One seventh grader drew a sad clown hanging by a belt from a ceiling fan. He had issues. Student here. My art teacher was somewhat crazy. She let us draw anything we wanted to get 100% all you had to do was tell her it had a deep connection to the earth or some other nonsense. I drew a jellyfish and told her it represented wisdom because it was immortal. I like to imagine one day she will just see a documentary on jellyfish and learn that they can't really learn or have wisdom and just have this epiphany. The kid was just making crap up. One kid had to have a meeting with the principal, her parents and the art teacher because the art teacher decided that because this second grade girl only drew people without hands, the little girl felt powerless, 
All these adults question this child about the meaning of her drawings. She tells them, hands are too hard to draw. I wanna see this art teacher's psychotherapy degree. Parent here, not an art teacher. In kindergarten, my son came home with a packet of finished assignments he got back from the teacher. One was a paper having them draw a body part with the prompt here are my. Example given was feet. What did my kid draw? Butt cheeks. Drawing of the back of a person with two giant, well drawn, I might add, cheeks. My husband and I laughed our own butt cheeks off when we saw it. We kept the paper. For posteriority. I laughed at the posteriority joke. Clever. When I was in second grade our teacher told us to doodle on the back of a quiz if we finished early. I decided to draw a house high in the sky with a long staircase leading to it. To emphasize its height I drew clouds but it needed more. I decided to add in an airplane. Later my teacher called me to her desk and I got in trouble because the plane looked like it was heading towards the house and this was right after 9-11 happened. Still have no idea what I was thinking. I ran arts and craft classes at a youth group for disadvantaged kids. Decided one day to give them total freedom. I just put out all the supplies we had and let them go crazy. Kids made some really cool works of art all very colorful and creative. I was talking to one kid when another asked me to help him spell things for his artwork. I go over to his table with him and he's been making a card for a boy in his class at school. He tells me his friend's mum had just died from cancer and he wanted to make a card for him to cheer him up but he couldn't spell anything he wanted to write. He was 13 years old and I had to help him spell out something like dear. I am so sorry about your mum but I will always be your friend and here for you. Love. I had to help him spell his own name. He made the card totally unprompted. I feel for the guy. He was totally sweet and caring for his friend and really smart. He'd just not got the help he needed. Went home after and had a little sob. Thanks for being a light in this world. I'm a teacher but I don't teach art. I was teaching a class of 7 year olds who are usually a blessing. But there's just one kid who has some real problems. He can't speak English at all. Even after me spending a year trying to teach him and all his classmates progressing well. He just refuses to engage with any teacher and is extremely disruptive. Often crying and screaming. I think he has special needs. But that's not handled well in China. Anyway. After battling and battling with him to no avail. Assigning him class police roles. Everything I just gave up this one day and gave him some paper to draw on whilst the rest of the kids learn without him distracting them. He drew a picture of me with a large PP and lots of knives and me with blood and wrote my name in perfect English. It was eerie but I just felt sad and concerned what had happened to this boy. The school gave him no support and I only saw him for about an hour a week. I left the school shortly after, unrelated, and wonder how he is now. Wonder how he is now. Probably in prison. That's where unsupported special needs children usually end up throughout the world. It shouldn't be that way, but it is. Unless he got the help he needed, then he's probably doing just fine. Former student here. We were supposed to do a bit of abstract artwork for a course assignment. My work was a framed square cut out from an old t-shirt I had previously used to help Ray stain an old table. Not only did I get an A on the assignment, but I entered it into a silent auction later that semester and someone bought it. Also former student. 10th grade art teacher told us to draw the city 50 years from now. I drew flying buildings and she threw it back at me because flying buildings are impossible. When I was around 8 or 9, I got into drawing cars, and simultaneously into drawing tribal decorations. Probably not PC, but you know, the type a lot of people get as a tattoo. So I drew a car with tribal decal and because of the hook, like shapes in the tribal decal, I, in, appropriately named the car the H. When she was done laughing, my mom took the time to explain the world's oldest profession. Reminds me of that time I got suspended in kindergarten for drawing a crappy stick figure gun. I tried to save myself that day by saying it was a water gun since it was so crappy you couldn't tell the difference but they weren't having it and little plava 27 went home that day. That's a strange thing to get detention for. Not that I particularly approve that way of raising boys, but when I was a kid, lots of boys would play with toy guns, action men figures and stuff and them drawing guns and scenes with fights was like a normal occurrence. 
we had three lessons for it. I spent two and a half messing around and the last half copying an existing Bauhaus painting in chalk. That was the only good grade I got in art class. Not a teacher but in middle school we got an assignment in art class to draw a still life of fruit. I thought the idea was totally boring and decided to put a creative spin on it. I drew a bunch of different fruits all sitting in the seats of a coliseum watching an apple kill an orange in the center ring. I failed the assignment, and my teacher even pulled me out into the hallway to tell me directly that she didn't like me or the work that I produced. I didn't let that crush my dream though, and I kept making my assignments weirder and weirder to pee her off. As someone who wished to do art art therapy with kids, I would have given you an 100%. Any subject can be boring for some. As long as you followed the guidelines and put the effort in, then it should have been a pass. The whole point of art is pretty much creativity and weirdness. Not an art teacher, however I used to grade the weekly sketchbooks for my art class as a senior. One week my teacher gave the prompt something with wings. So I'm grading all these sketchbooks that are 80% stick figures from kids that just took art to get an easy fine art credit. Lots of planes and birds. A few angels. Then I get to this one sketchbook that I know dang well belongs to a dude that's just coasting for the easy credit. I open it up expecting another stick bird and instead I'm surprised with this crude, but identifiable bucket of KFC wings. I lost my crap and cackled as I gave him a 100 knowing my cranky butt teacher would have instantly failed him if she'd seen it. In 9th grade as an end of the year project we could basically draw whatever we wanted and we had a week to do it. Me being the little car nerd I am drew the entire drivetrain and suspension of a Chevy K5 blazer. In junior high my art teacher pulled me aside to tell me that she was really impressed because I could draw better than her. After that she pretty much let me have free reign as long as what I was drawing worked towards the lesson goal. Such as shading, perspective, etc. For the end of year project, I did a Robert H. Very Tech Fighter and Stipple, drawn only using dots. The next year when I would have had her again for art, she paid out of pocket for me to take an art course at the community college across the street. She was an absolutely amazing teacher. Why yes s s s Robert H. I'm a art teacher but this story is about my substitute teacher. I asked my students what they had been drawing when I was gone. The class was absolutely silent. Apart from some boys that were giggling, they were 13 years old. I asked what what was so funny, and they said the substitute was great. At the same time the girls seemed as they wanted to disappear from the classroom. So I asked why the teacher was great, and the boys just exploded. He told us to draw flying dongs. Well I don't have to say more than that substitute teacher never come to our school again. Poor Daryl. Tried to leave his poultry farming life behind when he became a teacher but as they say, you can take the farmer out of the farm but you can't take out his dong. When I was in the 7th grade our art teacher had us do whatever we wanted to be entered in the school art fair. I was really lazy and decided to just use every color of pastel that was available to draw a rainbow of sorts on a piece of construction paper. Then I tore it all into pieces and glued them all together again randomly. I called the piece. Life and argued that it was supposed to represent the chaos and uncertainty that is life. It ended up winning first place in my grades part of the art fair and I ended up getting a cool art set. But really it was just me being lazy and feeding some bulls about a deeper meaning. That's pretty ironic. For all the people that spend countless hours planning their project and then poured their hearts and souls into it. Their parents told them it was the best art project they had ever seen. And then life serves up as it always does and the person who didn't care and was lazy about it wins. Nice. Fresh out of college, I got a job working with first and second graders at an after school program. My kids had journals that they wrote and drew in every day. Once, I had my first graders draw a picture of what they like to eat and write a sentence to go along with it. I was walking around the tables to check their work as they were finishing up and saw that one little boy drew a big brown phallic object with the word dong written across the front. Underneath, in proud bold letters, he had written I like dong. I pulled him aside and asked him to tell me about what he wrote. Coke is my favorite drink. He told me, I had to explain to him that it's very important to spell it coke not dong. TLDR. Boy says he likes to eat dong. I was an art teacher for 4 years and have so many stories so many stories. 
One that comes to mind is a drawing this strange little child who was oddly obsessed with me made me as a gift. Now, for context, my personal aesthetic is what my friends affectionately call adult tomboy goth, which is to say I wear all black, somewhat androgynous clothing, and have a penchant for the dark and absurd. Of course, in work environments I dress more professionally, but my kids all knew I was a dark humored little oddball and they loved me for it. So, this girl is doing free draw and every time I walk over she covers up the paper with her arm and hisses at me like a cat, as she was wont to do. After about an hour she scurries over to me with this huge grin on her face and announces, Baba Yagatron, Baba Yagatron, I made you a thing I I I I I I I ing, and my lord. Oh boy, was it the best gift I have ever received from a child. The drawing was of a skeleton, beckoning a crying girl with no eyes into a pre-dug grave. The grave site was elaborately mapped out with a whole underground portion where the coffin would be, a tombstone, and little flowers around the tombstone. I laminated it and to this day it is still on my bedroom door, even after 3 moves around the country. I freaking miss teaching. Not a teacher, but when I was in 7th grade I drew a picture in my art class sketchbook of Barney and Elmo smoking pot and drinking booze, drawn with colored pencils and all. I showed it to my friends and they thought it was the funniest thing they'd ever seen. The art teacher, however, was not pleased, and sent me to the principal's office. The principal then looked through my sketchbook and ripped out all the drawings she deemed as inappropriate. It shattered my soul that day and I cried for some time afterwards. In fact I think that's what ended my dream of becoming an artist. Frick you, Mrs. Bano and Mrs. McKeon, for robbing me of a better future. You can still be an artist now, the internet would love you a particular brand of social commentary. My art teacher's story about me is that I spent an entire school year drawing and painting planes. Must have been strange. As an art teacher and former goth dean, nothing my kids have drawn has really shocked me. I've had to make kids change things that are inappropriate one time a high school girl drew a hand giving the middle finger in chalk when we were drawing outside so we changed it to a peace sign. I did have to call home for two first graders who were drawing pooping butts while I was giving instructions. Their moms and I laughed through the entire phone call. I rarely let them draw whatever because they inevitably would draw predictable cliches. 8th grade boys would draw knives with blood dripping, or an eye, and girls a unicorn. The trying to get them to draw from life was tough. Obligatory not an art teacher but, I got a call about something like this from my kid's art teacher. She was 13 and in 8th grade art where she was told to do a pencil sketch of whatever she could think of. We had just moved, so the class had been working on this for a week and she had about a day. The teacher made sure the kid knew she would be getting an A just for turning something in. But because it was a new school, they were not yet aware that my kid has a morbid sense of humor and a fair amount of artistic talent that she built over the years. Two days later the art teacher calls me to make sure that everything is okay with kid because her sketch was of a live hamster in an electric coffee pot. It's one of my favorite pieces of her work. I had a 5th grade student who was very shy hesitant to start her work. The project was on identity and kids were supposed to draw things about themselves inside a silhouette of their heads that we had traced. She was almost in tears because she was very insecure and couldn't think of what to draw. I was trying to help her out by asking easy questions like what's your favorite animal? What's your favorite TV show to watch on Netflix? Finally at what's your favorite food she perked up, left my desk, and got to work. A few minutes later she proudly brings her drawing to me. I did it, I did it, I drew a taco, and I also made it pink because pink is my favorite color. I know tacos aren't pink, but in art things can be any color, right? Do you like my pink taco maze? Peered took everything in me to stifle my giggles, and I reassured her her taco was beautiful and that yes, it could be any color she wanted. She then proudly showed everyone in the room her pink taco. Thank god she was not a 7th or 8th grader. It went over all of their sweet innocent heads and they all praised and encouraged her. Great day. <laughs> Student here, pulled up pictures of severe frostbite to draw on a piece of paper in 6th grade. I wasn't allowed to do that. What in the frick made you do that in the first place? <laughs> when I was a sophomore in high school my art final was a paint anything you want assignment. So me being the creative mind that I am I painted a photorealistic octopus. 
that may have resembled my art teacher, teaching an art class, underwater scene, super duper trippy, probably my best single piece of artwork I've made up to that point. Well long story short my teacher didn't like the route I went and gave me a C on my final. When my art class found out about this it was almost an absolute riot because they thought I turned in one of the best finals of the year. Fast forward to the art show on the final day of school and my octopus was awarded a best in class ribbon. An amazing take that moment for me against that teacher. Also taught me a valuable lesson that everyone judges art differently and I just need to keep doing my own thing. Not an art teacher, but my daughter in first grade was given an assignment to write a story and draw. She wrote and drew a story about Frisky the Rhino. Please tell me that's saved somewhere. In the second grade, my sister wrote a story about a possum that ate a grandma and her grandson. It ended with the boy said to his grandma let's bounce this possum. And they did. She's 31 now and we still crack up about it. Not an art teacher, but when I was in late elementary early junior. Hi my art teacher at the time gave us free reign. I had just learned what fairies and pecamorphs, jajinkas, I think, were at the time. My art teacher thankfully just thought I couldn't draw werewolves for crap. My brother and his friend were 5 and attended an art class club. They got to draw anything they wanted. Our dog had just died so my brother drew the dog with angel wings. A pretty good one for a 5 year old. The friend, who was a wild kid, the kind that always got detention later in his school years drew a large wave and people escaping it. He explained that it was the tsunami of 2004 which had just happened. The moms of the boys and the teacher were swallowing tears when they saw the drawings. I don't see any issue with an angel dog. Seems like a pretty nice memorial for a well-loved papa. But I can see why that tsunami got them worrying. This was when I was at a last summer. It was for youth art classes at a very nice art museum. And I was helping out with the group of 5-8 year olds. There was this one 6 year old student who would act up a lot during class, always talk over the teacher, but then produce really beautiful and detailed drawings. The only issue was there they were always monsters from the Godzilla movies. No matter what the students were assigned to do, he managed to make these monsters the main image. This would be fine if I were the teacher, my main goal was for the kids to finish the day wanting to keep making art, but the actual teachers I worked with were a lot more rigid. The student gained a bit of a reputation for being difficult to work with and not respecting the teachers. I was essentially tasked with handling the student and making sure he stays on task. What I soon realized was this kid was insanely talented. He had an advanced grasp on animal anatomy, visual storytelling, and composition. After working with him for a month it became clear that he only acted up when the art being taught was something he was already skilled at, which was most of time since it was a beginner's class. He would quickly finish the assignments and get bored, then add Godzilla to them. Whenever he was learning a new technique or using new materials he wouldn't do this. He was also very book smart, and very nice once he saw I wouldn't get mad at him for his art. I ended up talking to his mom after class one day, and explained why he would often get in trouble. I then told her that the class was honestly too entry level for him and that she should see about him getting private lessons. She was extremely happy to hear this, and was thrilled that her son actually liked me. He had a rough time with school teachers too. The summer program ended soon after and I haven't seen him since. I'll bet he never forgot you. Oh I'm not a teacher but every year in my art class our teacher would give the assignment to draw Santa Claus in an unexpected place. On year my classmate drew a very realistic and very detailed picture of Santa Claus in the strip club. Throwing cookies to the strippers smoking a blunt. It was good. Like really really good. But he was still suspended. I will ho 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 this ho. Reposting myself. A girl. Nine years. Was doodling. And looking at the drawing afterwards I could immediately see her process. One she drew a little dancing dude. Arms and legs apart. Two. She drew Hill a little wiener. Three. She freaked out upon seeing the wiener. Her first idea to fix it had more wieners. 4. She must have really freaked once she saw the penis of the Frankenstein she had created. So she switched to a marker and drew a skirt over the wiener. Added a girly hairdo to the head and added some eyelashes. People who have snapped on a bully at school. What's your story? I was 7 and I was a nice kid with average grades and this one bully that was taller than me. He used to be any typical bully like. 
trip you on your lunch, and push your head for no apparent reason. I was getting annoyed that I felt the red heat go all over my body. I looked at him and told him to stop. I looked at him, he pushes me to the ground. I stop and kicked his tables and punched his nose with all my force. His nose started to bleed and I was sent to the office. My mom had this thing where if they started it then she'll pretend that she's mad at me at school and come home saying congrats. Nah, that's one of the few nice things my father ever did. If a bully pushed far enough that I had to defend myself he showed up angry as heck that teachers ever let it get to the point that I had to defend myself. One of his rules for fighting in school is that I should never initiate a fight, but I should defend myself when it came to it. A group of boys thought it was hilarious to keep our football and stop us from getting it back after it rolled towards them on the school field. They kept passing it between themselves and picking it up and trying to keep it away from us. After trying for about a minute to get the ball from them by running after it, one of them picked the ball up and kept moving it away trying to keep it out of my reach. I took a few steps back, no longer interested in trying to not hurt them and did a goal kick on the ball. I kicked his hand in the process and the ball smacked him in the face and gave him a bloody nose. He didn't even try to react, he just turned and walked away with his tail between his legs. Best mental image ever. The bully would always grab my butt or slap my neck, say rude things about my nationality and insult me. I often told him to stop that, but he never did. For a year and a half, once, in a lecture, he came to my desk and grabbed my butt. I had a really bad day that day too. The moment he grabbed my butt, I saw red. I was mad. I stood up and looked him in the eye. I took his head and smashed it against the wall with all I had. Nothing serious happened to him. Except for the teacher being mad at him for bothering me. I was a quiet and good hearted kid. And the teacher knew that. I'm a guy. And that butthole wasn't even gay. Or maybe he was. But never admitted it. Not at school but I was 12 and a kid on my block constantly challenged me to fight him because he knew I didn't want to. So it was a great way for this chubby, incompetent brat to show off. One day, outside the convenience store, to his surprise I accepted. He came towards me and I basically just lifted up my leg and kicked him in the stomach. Honestly, he just bounced off my foot. In shock, he came at me again. This repeated about three times as the expression of disbelief on his face became more pathetically pronounced. He finally gave up and ran home past my house, telling my mother who happened to be outside that I beat him up. But she already knew about his behavior towards me so as soon as I explained what happened it was all good. He wasn't actually hurt physically, just emotionally. We both learned a good lesson that day, and he actually grew up to be a decent guy from what I could tell. This repeated about three times as the expression of disbelief on his face became more pathetically pronounced. Freaking hilarious. In middle school we were hanging around before classes started, and this guy who used to be my friend came up behind me and put a condom in my mouth. I turned around, pushed him up against the wall and punched him in the face. The whole school heard about it and they were all backing me up for the rest of the day. I didn't even get in trouble. He was super embarrassed and tried to negotiate with me saying you have to let me punch you back to make up for it or save his honor or some crap. People would not stop teasing him about it. I think that when the teachers heard about it they thought it was funny and I had a good rep with them so they let it slide. I had been bullied all year long by this guy and it was the last week of 8th or 9th grade. Comes up to me and says something about my clothes or something and I just saw red. I turned around and hit him with a palm strike to the face. The bottom of my hand connected right under his nose. He doubled over and I bolted. I heard later his lip got stuck in his braces and he had to go to the doctor to fix it. I got a stern talking to about not hitting people although my teachers were aware of the verbal bullying. That's the worst problem is people in authority knowing about it and ignoring it. 5th grade. Can't remember what specifically caused me to snap. But after spending the last 5 years being continually harassed, bullied, and assaulted by a specific boy I'd had enough. I calmly walked to the mounted pencil sharpener at the back of the class and sharpened my pencil to a very fine tip. Then, I walked behind said bully, and in a downward motion slashed him across the entirety of his back in one fluid motion. Obviously, I got a truckload of crap for what I did, 
Principal insinuated to my mother that the parents of the other boy may want to press charges for my harming of their pride and joy. My mother, bless her heart, retorted back, if that's the case, perhaps I should press charges considering how often my son has been coming home with cuts, bruises and welts administered at their boy's hands without repercussions from your staff. The principal moon walked out of that conversation so freaking fast. I still was read the riot act at home, though. Got drilled into me that what I did was use a weapon to harm someone, and that it would never be tolerated at any level. Grounded for a very, very long time. Bully gave me space, for a while anyway. Went back to his usual torment after a couple weeks, minus any physical contact. I'm imagining the principal hearing your mom say that and then him he heeing his way out of the room. This happened in 8th grade. I was bullied from the beginning of 7th grade and one day, I decided to report him. I got bullied for reporting the bully. I got so mad that one day after church I beat him up in the parking lot. I made sure I didn't beat him up enough to have to call an ambulance but enough to hurt. He didn't mess with me from then onwards. I find it ironic you beat him up after attending church lol. I was severely bullied from my earliest memory all the way through high school. The times I remember snapping were these. 3rd grade, we were putting the chairs upside down onto the desks at the end of the day and this kid kept pushing my chair and pushing me. I turned around and shoved him as hard as I could with both hands and he fell onto the desk behind him. The chair fell off, he fell off onto the chair, and I got in trouble. 4th grade, at some boy scout thing and there were sodas. I got one out of the cooler and a kid who bullied me a lot grabbed it out of my hand and walked away. I grabbed another one and threw it at the back of his head. Got in trouble, of course. 7th or 8th grade, after being bullied incessantly, I lost it and was crying and screaming and punching the lockers and got in trouble for denting a couple of them. 9th or 10th grade, while on the bus, one of the bullies grabbed my comb out of my back pocket. He'd messed with me a lot, rather than punching. For some reason I used my open hand to slap him really hard on top of his head. He was seated and I was standing in the aisle. He complained of his neck hurting from it and I got in trouble. Between each of these instances, I'd put up with constant bullying every day and do nothing and no teachers gave a crap. Bullies got away with bullying all the time, but even if I simply said leave me alone with a loud voice, I was in trouble. It never made sense to me. To clarify, I'm not the attention seeking intentional victim type. While I still have a ton of self-doubt, I'm doing pretty decently now. Took a frick ton of time and effort, though, lol. Zero tolerance, yeah, zero tolerance for people defending themselves against constant bullying. Beat mine with a hockey stick one day after school. We were playing road hockey, he lived down the street. He just kept going and to be honest I saw red. I just remember my dad pulling me off while I was slamming my wooden goalie stick into his side while he tried to cover his bleeding face. His parents never perused anything. My parents took me to counseling. He ended up nearly killing his best friend in a drinking and driving accident. Friend was never the same. Permanently injured. Bully killed himself a few years later after he didn't make a junior hockey team. I still feel bad. I have never have been in any violent interaction before or since. Now as an adult, and an educator I know he was likely really hurting. I am sorry, Justin. The only way we improve as a greater community is to role model how to be human. And that includes mistakes, regrets, and sorrow as much as it includes success, celebrations and happiness. Keep sharing it all, we all learn from our shared stories. To those who sent me direct messages about their struggles, I promise you I will respond to every one of them by tomorrow. To anyone else reading this, I always respond to personal messages. So feel free if you want someone to chat with. If you're struggling with any thoughts of serious self-harm, please call your local suicide helpline. I've used them before. It does help, even if it's just a little. Keep taking care of each other everyone. It takes little effort to be kind. This was in 7th grade I think. I threw a shoe at him in a changed room. He was just picking on some random kid and I just had enough of his crap. And I completely missed him and hit the guy that he was picking on right in the face. 
Everyone froze for a second and then burst out into laughter, and the guy who was being picked on started crying and I felt really bad because I meant to hit the bully. Shoes are hard to throw accurately okay. I tried to tell him that it was for the bully and I guess I calmed him down a little bit. Also by apologizing profusely, after the incident, the mood in the change room was lightened and everyone started being more chill with each other so I guess it was a success lol. A small price to pay for salvation. This wasn't me but a quiet kid at school one of the bullies was picking on. The quiet kid never reacted even when the bully punched him. This went on for months and the bully was always trying to get this guy to fight him but the kid always said I don't want to fight you. Then one day the bully broke this guy's art project on purpose he was about to hand him to be marked and the kid snapped. He belted the absolute crap out of this bully. We actually had to jump in and break it up because he was going to kill the guy and didn't look like stopping. I will never forget the bully turning up to school a few days later and his face was so swollen and one eye was completely closed and black and blue from all the punches he took to the face. I learned two things that day. Bullies are cowards and always be wary of the quiet ones. There are three things all wise men fear, the sea and storm, a night with no moon, and the anger of a gentle man, Patrick Rothfuss. This happened 6 years ago when I was in 5th grade and the bully was in 6th grade. I'd gotten to school a bit early and was just chilling on my phone when the bully came up and started ranting about how I couldn't be on my phone. Me. School hasn't even started yet. Besides, it's not your business. Bully, I'll go tell a teacher and they'll take your phone away. Childish I know. Me, they won't care. School hasn't started yet. Just go away. He then reached for my phone. He literally tried to take it. Of course I didn't let him. I was getting really frustrated and told him, again, to go away. He didn't. He decided it was a good idea to freaking punch me in the face. I wasn't ready at all so I didn't even have time to put my arms up or anything. Just a first straight to the face. Now, I was a pretty small girl back then and the bully was a year older and apparently played a lot of sports and stuff. And on top of that he was standing up and I was sitting down. I just snapped. Without even thinking I just punched back as hard as I could. He just kinda stared at me before running off. I could literally head him crying. He shouted at me that he'd tell a teacher. But no one mentioned it to me ever again and I never got in trouble. The bully didn't bother me even once after that. You have to be the biggest pee in the world to be a guy who punches a girl in the face while she's sitting down. It wasn't me, but a kid I knew in middle school would constantly get picked on by two other kids who would act like jerks. Badger him. Push him around. Well one day they were messing with him. Pushing him around. And calling him names and he looks at one of the kids and calmly says if you push me one more time. I'm going to punch you in the face the bully decided to push him again and the kid turned and punched him square in the nose. The bully immediately started crying when he realized his nose was bleeding. He ran off with his friend to tell on the kid even though they were bullying him in the first place. Everyone around him, including me, was cheering him on as he had stuck up for himself. <laughs> was bullied in maybe second grade? He kept pushing me and messing with me so I just swung at him when I was sick of his crap. I sat his butt down and he's left me alone since. I think we became friends later I don't remember. I wore glasses so was bullied by every single bully in the school. Unfortunately for everyone who tried, they didn't realize me wearing glasses didn't also make me not be over 6 foot in grade school. So I got bullied a single time by every bully and then never again. Is it possible to learn this power? In 5th grade I saw the girl who bullied me getting picked on. Her mom died due to health complications and someone was saying she died because she was too fat. Even though she picked on me every day I still stuck up for her. She didn't thank me or anything. But I think after I did that she was a little nicer to me. Good on you for being the bigger person and helping someone in need even though they were crappy to you. Hopefully she remembers this and has stopped her crap since. Year 7. So I was 12. Part of the bullying included this other girl being a dong about getting into our lockers. She had the one next to me, and they were both on the ground, so we'd have to put our bags on the floor when we wanted to get into them. If she got there first then I had to wait for her to finish before I could get to mine. But if I was there first then she'd shove my bag out of the way and wouldn't be patient at all. It sounds unimportant now but this wasn't the only thing that was going on. 
One day, she grabbed my bag and shoved it out of the way like normal and I snapped. I yelled at her, explaining exactly how she had been being unfair, and that she needed to make a freaking decision on which way it was gonna work, and then stick to it. She and her friend literally had their mouths hanging open in shock which is a sight I'll never forget, and the lockers stopped being an issue after that. She decided on patience rather than shoving bags out of the way. I just wish I'd lost my crap at the bullies more often. Maybe the rest of it would've stopped sooner. My twin sister makes fun of me and doesn't stop. One time I had enough of her bullying and I told her if she didn't leave me alone I would strangle her. She still wouldn't leave me alone so I attempted to pretend strangle her. I just grabbed her neck for a few seconds. It was enough to scare her and she ran away crying. We were about 9 or 10. I was the quiet kid at school. Bully had been especially annoying to me that day. At lunch he yelled something to me. I walked up to him and slapped him across his face. His face instantly became red and he jumped at me and tackled me to the ground. I shook him off, then shoved him into the wall. After that he didn't mess with me. So I grew up moving around a lot with mom and dad. Unfortunately that meant being the new kid quite a bit. I was a pretty awkward kid but I generally managed to make friends. Except one particular school. I was there for 3 years which is the longest run at one elementary school I ever had. Anyways. The popular girls would bully me constantly. I was about 50 pounds soaking wet when I was younger and was on average skinnier than most. They would call me anorexic and ask why my parents starved me etc. They didn't. My parents were and still are amazing. But one day the popular girl asked me to give her a push on the gliders. You'd hang onto a t-bar and push off from one but platform to the next. Well I pushed her. Really hard. And she fell off and broke her arm. I transferred schools the next week. I moved a lot. I had 9 schools before college. Not fun. New boys tend to attract bullies and I was small for my age. Good times. I was about 8 at the time. A group of boys, at school, gathered around me formed a circle and started pushing me around. I was a reserved and shy kid and this was surprisingly the tipping point for me. I started yelling at each of them and asked them if bullying a defenseless girl made them feel cool. They backed off. I saw one of the boys alone in one of the washrooms, common sink area, and for the first time, he said hi and walked off. I'll never forget this day. In 4th grade Ronnie and Freddy kept ridiculing me, making remarks, teasing me at recess. I was raised to be peaceful and accommodating. I tried to ignore them, but it got under my skin. I decided to stay near the teacher at recess. They left me alone then, but I couldn't stay near the teacher all the time. They accused me of being teacher's pet. That bugged me even more. This went on for weeks. When recess was over we lined up on the sidewalk to go back indoors. One day Ronnie was right behind me. He started teasing me. I lost it. I took him down. When they pulled me off him I was pounding his head against the pavement. Ronnie stopped teasing me. Noting the improvement, I challenged Freddy to a fight after school. A crowd gathered. It took only a few seconds for me to pin Freddy to the ground and force him to surrender. That ended the teasing from Freddy. A day or two later my mother and I were called to the principal's office. My father was overseas in combat. Ronnie and his mother were there. I never knew where Ronnie's father was. As soon as the meeting started, Ronnie's mother launched into an indictment of me. Before she was finished the principal cut her short. Now let's hear the other side, she said. I stated my case. The principal heard me out, then said, Gentlemen don't fight, it's against the rules to fight on the school ground. I want you two to shake hands and apologize. I did as told, Ronnie had to be prompted to apologize. But that's not the end of it. Years later, in my early 20s I had a job at a research institute at university. The institute director's beautiful young wife said to me, A young man called Ronald J. was just hired. He says he beat you up in grade school. That's not exactly how I remember it. I replied. I'm not surprised, she said. A week later there was a party at the director's house. Ronnie and I were there. Ronnie was slender, maybe 5 feet 9 inches. 
I was 6 feet 4 inches, about 195 pounds, ran 6 miles per day. The director's wife maneuvered Ronnie over to the, the group where I was, and said, Ronald, let's hear how you beat up Polanski in grade school. Ronnie mumbled something about a mistaken impression and left shortly afterward. He was careful to avoid me from then on. Sometime during the next year or so I laughed and mentioned it to my mother. She said the principal had said to her, I wish I had been there to see it when Polanski pounded Ronnie's head on the sidewalk. This is so satisfying to read. This girl had had an issue with me for a month or so. She was pretty beefy but was all talk and no bite. One day we were queuing for lunch and she's stood behind me whispering in my ear that I'm a waste of space etc. The normal stuff. Then she started taking the pee out of my family. She said that my brother is just her baby fg. He's 10 years old and I have pictures all over my social media of him wearing dresses since he enjoys dressing up. She said that my sister is a freak and my dad is fat. Then she said that my mum should have had life support turned off while she was in hospital. She had recently spent a month in hospital with sepsis. I can only assume she had done some serious digging around on Facebook or something but for me. As much as my family gets on my nerves and angers me. I can't stand people using them as some sort of leverage. But anyways next thing I know the cutlery I'm holding is being dragged down her face and she has her hands around my neck. It all kind of happened very fast but also in slow motion. I punched her boob. She need my stomach. Eventually two teachers drag us apart and I obviously look in the wrong for striking first. But she also has blood running down her face from a couple of deepish scratches. She got suspended for 3 days and I got suspended for a week. I was pretty lucky tbh. We never had a run in a game but she also transferred to a different school the next term so everything just moved on. I do wish I hadn't snapped bc not only did I disappoint a lot of people. I also most likely scarred that girl's face for life. Which I feel super crappy about. Idk she deserved it when she told you your mother should have died in the hospital. When I was in the 7th grade I got a 2 day suspension for fighting. We were playing kickball and this one kid, Alexis, was being a real dong with everyone. He was always in butthole to everyone, but he was being extra mean today. Purposely trying to be them as pitcher and running into them trying to knock them over when he was taking a base. I'm playing second base at one point and he runs into me like that knocks me back. He was pretty fast so it was a hard hit. And I just lost it and got up and started throwing punches. The gym teacher came and broke us up right away and dragged us to the principal's office. The only thing he said to me was, man, you hit hard. And then he laughed. I'm lucky that it wasn't now because I would have probably gotten expelled. But I got off with just two days of suspension. I explained to my parents why I was fighting and they understood I was just standing up to an butthole. I real danger now is parents pressing assault charges. It's happened to a couple students of mine, and that is some serious trouble. When I was in high school we just called fights a 3 day vacation. What is the dumbest thing you got punished for in school? Flip the monitor screen upside down, control and alt and arrow key, got banned from using any school computer for the rest of the year. I did this by mistake once, and told my friend about it, after I left. He decided to flip the screen and leave it that way. I got in trouble for leaving the computer in an inoperable state. They had to re-image the whole thing. 6th grade. A classmate got to school without her backpack and I was the only one to notice. School started and she was looking for her bag and I told her I saw her arrive without it, after which she started yelling at me for no reason telling everyone that I had hid her bag. I exploded with laughter. Because it was funny that she was blaming me. Teachers came and sent me to the principal's office. Nobody believed me. I guess giggling didn't help. I was in detention until this kid's mom called the school to let her stupid daughter know that she forgot her backpack. I'm 33 now and not so long ago I saw this girl again. I went to say hello and to remind her of that day. Which to me it's still funny. She didn't react at all to that. Yeah. You are still in butthole Susan. Freaking Susan. In middle school one of my friends brought her low kitty band-aids to school and our entire friend group decided to wear them as an accessory. Hands arms. Because they were cute. Our English teacher wrote us up and demanded that we don't wear bandages for the rest of the year because he saw them as gang symbolism. A hello kitty band-aid gang. I still don't understand his thought process. 
walks into a small store alright, you cute little kitties, give us all of the money, or we will hug you. Holding my pencil the wrong way, teachers hated it, they tried those little rubber things, and nothing worked. I liked my way, I have nice handwriting by the way, well this really irked my 5th grade math teacher, so she started to dock 5 points on every test or quiz I held my pencil wrong. When my father asked what it was about, and I told him, he laughed and said, keep going. 4th grade, this crazy girl who was always talking to herself told me about her elaborate plan to kill the teacher, I told the teacher and got in trouble for gossiping. Talking during lunch. The policy was a silent lunch, also with silent class hours, meaning the children weren't allowed to talk, which essentially gave everyone a half hour of recess to get out all of that built up energy. Understandably, my 5 year old self was not down with that. We were in the process of being dismissed anyway. It technically counted as recess time. I have a somewhat common sounding name. However, I've only ever really encountered two people with my name. One of them was in middle school. He was black. I'm white. One time I got called to the principal's office for something that happened on the bus on the way to school. I wasn't a bus rider. All the other students involved were black. One look at me, and the principal knew it wasn't me. So, I was dismissed. The next year, I decided to cut class with a couple of friends. We just took off running across the field behind the cafeteria at the end of lunch. As we ran, one of the administrators saw us, and another friend of ours was close by. Pretty sure he got grilled and ratted us out. My two other friends got suspended, and I never heard a peep. I suspect the opposite happened. The black kid with my name got called in, and they obviously knew he wasn't involved. TL. DR. Me and a black kid with the same name got each other out of trouble by being different races. This could be a sitcom. You guys could live together and get in wacky antics and social misunderstandings. Being left handed on the first day of first grade, the teacher took away my pencil and made me use my right hand. When my mother picked me up I told her what happened. She talked to the principal, who apologized, then called in the teacher to make her apologize. The rest of the school year was very tense. Another event occurred to me. I got a day of internal suspension in high school for having an overdue library book. I had returned it in time, but the librarian put it on the wrong cot and it was shelved without being scanned back in. I know this because a few days after I returned the book I saw it on the shelf. I still had to pay the overdue book fine. I wasn't permitted to graduate college until I returned or paid for a book I had only had for 24h and late fees, because the library lost it. I very much feel your pain. <laughs> Refusing to dance in kindergarten. We were doing some activity that involved dancing. I didn't want to and I convinced a friend to join me in protest, so they sent me to the principal's office and called my mom. Dang a man. <laughs> Starting a huge conga line my senior year. One morning, I went to my locker and was taking to my friends. We decided to start to conga for some stupid reason. I was in the front so I led us down the hallway. I started to point at people and tell them to join the party. I told them to invite anybody that they knew. I led us through the cafeteria, through the gym, and when I decided to walk to the principal's office, a teacher stopped us and said that the conga line was a fire hazard since it had gotten so long. I told him that was dumb. If there was a fire, we'd conga right out of the school. They gave me a good taking to for being a smart butt. Also, I was going to get paddled by the principal for fighting. He told me he liked me so he was only going to give me one paddling. I said if he really liked me, he would give me two. I was suspended. <laughs> Hugging a friend of mine. School had a no PDA rule and they cracked down on it. I had just seen my friend for the first time after winter break. I gave her a hug for like a second. I am also female. Teacher saw it and threw a fit and I would up talking to the principal. Good thing the principal was a smart lady. She let me and my friend off with a warning. I never hugged anyone in school after that. What the frick kind of rule is that? In 5th grade we were starting an assignment, and the Tay was going around passing out the papers we needed. I was going through my pencil case mumbling kind of a supply checklist to myself. Pencil, sharpener, eraser, she hands me the sheet, and I say, paper, she looks at me all weird and walks away. Don't know what that was about, but I start working. 
About a minute later the teacher walks up to me and says I have to stay in for detention at recess. Uh, what? Reason. The T thought I said payback. Apparently as in there'll be payback for giving me this paper. I guess, it was completely retarded. I explained myself, but they just weren't having it. We argued until lunch, and I was getting increasingly pee off to the point where I was on the verge of tears. Eventually everyone left, and the teacher said, Okay, I believe you. I don't think you'd be this upset if you weren't telling the truth. Just apologize and you can go out with the rest of the class. That pee me off even more. I asked what I was supposed to apologize for. Just say you're sorry we misunderstood you, then you can go play. I took the detention. Cracking my back. The teacher wrote me up for doing gymnastics in class and sent me to the principal. He laughed and asked if I did a barrel roll. I had to have it signed by my parents as well, who laughed too. It was funny for everybody, but at the end of the day I was still stuck on a Saturday morning doing stupid work. Still bitter. Reading during class. This was computer class. They were teaching us how to open a Word document. The detention was lunch detention. They assumed that me, a lonely little 6th grader, would be in agony by not eating in the lunch room, but instead a quiet room. I just happily ate my lunch and read my book more. My senior year of high school, power went out and neither my mom's nor my alarm went off. This was 30 years ago, no cell phone alarms. Neither one of us woke up in time to get me to school on time. She brought me in late with a note saying it wasn't my fault that I was late. They gave me a detention for an unexcused tardy. I go off that it wasn't unexcused, that I had the note that said I wasn't the cause of me being late. The office person said that that note wasn't a valid excuse. I say something along the lines of, so you're telling me that if I would have lied and said that I had a doctor's appointment, I would be fine. She says yes. I tell her that's bulls and all they are doing is telling people to lie instead of telling the truth. She says something along the lines of, someday I'll learn that telling the truth is its own reward and that lying has its own consequences. I said, but those consequences are to detention. I was furious. I went to the phones at school, pay phones, and called my mom at work, told her the story and an hour later I got called back down to the office. Apparently my mom had written the wrong thing on the note, I was at a doctor's appointment that morning, so I didn't have to serve a detention. Moral of the story, lying gets you places in life. In 4th grade I drew a picture of Link from Zelda, and included a crappy portrayal of the Master Sword. Went to principal's office, and had my parents called. I must have been in first or second grade. I was sitting with a kid on the bus to school that I got along with. We weren't great friends, but we'd talk on the way to school. I have no clue what started this convo, but he starts asking me if I thought a grenade could blow up the bus. Well I guess, what about an RPG I guess, a tank could definitely do it, that wasn't verbatim, but you get the gist. It was some kid just idly daydreaming probably about Call of Duty or something. I do remember that this day I'd been reading when he started this convo. I replied with nothing other than yay makes sense or I guess. We both were suspended from riding the bus for a week. English class in 10th grade. We had a test on a book we were supposed to be reading. The entire test was short answer and I had literally not read a single word of the book meaning it would be next to impossible for me to guess any of the correct answers. When the teacher was passing out the exams, I politely said to her I'm sorry but I didn't read at all so you can just keep my paper. She told me that she was very disappointed and asked me to at least write my name on the test so that she knew I was present that day. I wrote my name at the top in pen. According to the syllabus in that class, using a pen on any of the assignments results in minus 2 points on the grade. I received a minus 2 on a test for that. I would have performed better by staying home that day. Got yelled at in 6th grade. I was bused to a bad neighborhood by the guard watching us on the playground for being on the sidewalk, not the blacktop. I said, okay, sorry and did a little wave. She detained me and drilled me what gang sign did you throw up at me I was this little 10 year old white mormon girl and didn't even know what a gang sign was. Because a girl slapped me as a joke. I got lunch detention but I just skipped it because I thought the zero tolerance policy was bulls. My name is spelled with a H in the middle, 
which is unusual for said name to be spelled for the female variant. In year 7, a teacher went off on me when I was writing on the front of a book saying that wasn't my name and I'd spelled it wrong on purpose. Fuck you a very long argument I lost, which resulted in me having to write lines of the spelling without the H in my lunch break while the teacher berated me for lying about something I wasn't actually lying about. Reminds me of a sub we had that wouldn't believe that my classmate's name was Gideon. Like, that's an older name. Sure, but it's perfectly normal and biblical even. The sub flipped the frick out, thought everyone was messing with her that that was his name and he got sent down to the principal. Burping. No crap. Fourth year of school and PE. Playing with the big parachute, I burped, excused myself and was told to remove myself from the lesson. My friend got detention in second grade for burping. For not doing anything. We had recess and the janitor came to me and said yeah you have detention. I said why? He said you know why. I still don't get it. There was a kid in my class with obvious behavioral problems but the school didn't do jack crap to help him. One day at recess some other kids were playing keep away with his hat. He has a total meltdown and just starts attacking one of the kids, throwing punches, kicking, screaming. Trying to defuse the situation I walk up behind him and bear hug him so he stops punching this kid in the face and just keeps saying calm down. At that moment I hear a teacher screaming my name. I turn and see her watching from a window. A minute later she comes running outside yelling at me and drags me to the principal's office. My parents are called and I have to have a conference with the teacher, principal, my mom, the other kid, his parents. Nothing I say matters because this teacher saw me beating this kid up from her window. I ended up with detention, had to apologize to this kid and his parents, and was suspended from the basketball team. It's especially sad because you did exactly what you're supposed to do when someone's having a meltdown like that to help them chill out. I was in the 4th grade. Prior to being dropped off at school by my dad, I had discovered an old school Lego spear. You know the little brown ones, and a rubber band. I had likewise discovered that if you stretch the rubber band around the length of the spear and then pull slightly on it, you can make a square shape with the spear propping up two of the corners. This is amazing I thought to myself. I conveniently forgot that if you pull on the sides of the rubber band too much, that the spear goes flying. So I brought my new square making toy in to show all of my friends and they were about as impressed as you all are reading this. We're waiting in line to go to one of our classes and I'm showing a friend and lo and behold, the spear flies out of the rubber band and hits our teacher in the glasses. She just stares at me, I stare at her, and she says go to the principal's office. I find out that she claimed that I was attempting to kill her. The principal just laughed while all three of us were in her office and she told me that she had to call my dad and he had to come in. The principal relayed the story and now my dad's laughing too. TL. DR. My teacher thought I was attempting to kill her with a Lego spear. Walking home instead of riding the school bus. I lived only a mile from the school and decided I was going to start exercising by walking home every day. They allowed this, but I had to have a note written by my mom saying I could and I didn't know that. When they tried to punish me for it my mom basically told the principal to frick off. Punishing you was stupid as you were obviously a child who didn't know any better, but the policy is important. The school needs to be able to account for each child when they leave campus in case something happens. Math class, 8th grade, I couldn't figure out how to do a problem. The teacher got frustrated and told me to ask to read the book. I said your teacher, teach me, got detention. Hey, I don't show up where you work and tell you how to suck dongs, kid. <laughs> Yelling no loudly, 4th or 5th grade, the teacher asked us if we wanted to play a game no one liked. Everyone was like no and I guess I yelled. I didn't even realize I was louder than the other kids, and I was very confused that I got in trouble. I was sent to sit in a little cubicle near another classroom. The teacher forgot me and they all went to lunch and some other teacher found me there, crying, alone, in the dark. And then in high school, the teacher said no talking and the kid next to me asked me a question and before I could even tell him to shut up, I got detention. He didn't go. I had to copy an essay about how I would bring my letter grade up by paying attention in class. I had straight A's. Another time, in maybe 7th grade, my friend kept throwing my hobbit book across the lunchroom, and then when I went to get it, 
She would bump me off the end of the bench onto the floor when I tried to sit back down. So she goes to throw it again. And I grabbed her wrist to stop her and she started crying and we both got attention. Which I thought was really unfair considering she was bullying me. And had literally knocked me to the ground. In high school I was sent to the principals for wearing a short sleeved loose fitting dress that went down to my knees. They claimed it was too provocative. Um what? I was furious. I got yelled at for consulting an encyclopedia. No formal punishment. The teacher just knew she was wrong and I was about to look up the correct answer. Kissing my girlfriend. Someone in a house across the street saw. Called the school. And I was suspended for a few days. Sounds like the guy who called was jelly. Stepping on a rug in middle school. It was in the middle of the rotunda and no one was allowed to step on it. I did. And I got in school suspension. Why the frick would you even have a rug if nobody can step on it? That's like having a clock that doesn't work. It's useless. I turned around in algebra to look at the clock. The teacher thought I was talking to the person behind me and I wasn't allowed back into class for the day. Does high school count? If yes, then pimping out my friends. After a night out partying, two of my friends lost their virginity in what I understood was a pretty awesome threesome. Day after this happened I got called into school and threatened with expulsion. Being expelled. Apparently their parents came into school and complained about their daughters having lost their virginity in such a way. Not exactly sure how they found out. I can only assume one of them told and phone calls ensued. The conclusion was that the two girls would have never done this on their own. So they must have had a pimp who dragged them into this and later benefited from the encounter. That would be me. The guy involved in the threesome didn't even buy me a thank you drink. Ended up getting a one week suspension. The principal knew the story was bull but he didn't want to bother fighting the crazy parents. Butthole of a kid thought it would be funny to attack me out of the blue. I ended up with a sprained wrist and some broken ribs and he was totally fine. I got a week in school suspension and he got away scot free. I got in trouble once back in junior high for some kid deciding to fight me and I didn't fight back but zero tolerance and all. He tried it again about a month later thinking he was hot crap and I beat the crap out of the kid. Getting in trouble the second time was totally worth it. I had some kids prepared to hit me in the face with a football. I decided to grab his arm and take the football out of his hand. Another kid then took the ball and threw it at him. He went off and cried saying I hit him and then threw a football at him. Everyone else in the classroom took the stance of no snitching and I got suspended because no one would verify my side of the story. So much for defending myself. It was the 1960s. I was a straight A student. When asked my opinion about a book the class was reading, I admitted that I thought it was boring. I got 10 lashes with a leather strap on each hand and a month of after school detention. 6th grade. I got into an argument with a kid who bullied me a lot. So I told him at least my parents like each other his parents are divorced. Dong move. I know. But this kid is a huge butthole. Anyway. He gets pee and leaves. I think finally. He leaves me alone. Nope. He returns with a big rock. And bashes me in the head with it. I'm knocked out. And have to get carried back to the nurse's office by another kid. Leaving a blood trail all the way. I required a few stitches, so I get suspended for 3 days, and 1 day of in school suspension, for bullying the other kid, went home for half a day. I have had a few situations in my public school life that just made me lose complete faith in our administration. That is beyond ridiculous. It always makes me even more sad and angry when I see more cases out there. It's almost comforting to think oh, hey, it must only be X school that's so bad. But, nope. I was in art class, and my friend was walking in the hall and waved at me through the door. I waved back right as the teacher looked at me, and she took me in the hall and griped both me and my friend for it. Not me, but my friend got sent down to the principal's office three times in one class period for telling a girl that she has nice hair. Uh, running down the corridor backwards giving my terrible guidance teacher the finger and calling her a ginger goblin C. Kind of acceptable reason to be punished. Now I think of it. Called a guy a name after he made fun of my last name. He walked up and decked me. Smacked my head on the desk and tore my lip open. Guess who's the one that got detention?
You zero tolerance for the win. My friend wanted a packet of ketchup. We aren't allowed to have more than one packet. He took an extra one and was suspended. My high school's tech department decided that making the admin login credentials have the username admin and the password be the abbreviation of the school. HS. Once I realized that, I decided that needed to grant myself all admin privileges. I eventually got caught because kids in the library behind me starting trying to look over my shoulder to watch March Madness since it was blocked for everyone else. Tech department accused me of hacking into their network and disagreed with my assessment that it was social engineering at best. In the end, I lost computer privileges for two weeks and wasn't allowed back in the library. If they were competent and investigated it at all, they would have found out I kept crediting my student lunch account and basically never actually paid for food the entire year. It was dumb in mind that I got in trouble for the harmless aspect of it all when they really had no idea what I had actually done. Going to the washroom. Grade 7 during French class I had to go to the washroom since I just had a math test and was unable to go then. I asked my teacher and he said no even though he wasn't teaching and we were supposed to just read a passage. I told him it was an emergency and he still said no. So I walked out and he started yelling after me. When I came back from the washroom he gave me detention so I left to the office to talk to the principal about this and told her I am not gonna stay after school for this. The principal ended up having a talk with my teacher and my detention suddenly turned into a warning. It is actually illegal to deny children the bathroom on most states. You are allowed penalize them or even make them wait for a person to come back but an outright now is illegal in most states. There's a few to pick from. 1. In 5th grade, my Midwestern art teacher told us to wash our paint brushes. I asked her how to spell that. She sent me to the office. 2. In 7th grade I copied and pasted my friend's paper 400 times when he was gone and he started to print it. About 40 pages in, the teacher noticed. Got sent to the office. 3. In 7th grade I let people tie me to a fence. Got a week in detention. 4. In 2nd or 3rd grade my friend and I traded food. At the time, we had a strict no talking or sharing food rule during lunch. Got sent to the office. What did your school waste money on that nobody liked? They made a huge screen with four huge plasma screens and put it in a very random place in a very random building hall. No signal. No signal. No signal. No signal. No signal. School spendings in a nutshell. 1. Pay high price and shiny technology. 2. Abundantly congratulate yourself about being a modern and advanced school. 3. Don't use it because complicated and staff is not trained. 4. Nothing changes. Teachers still use old or own equipment. 5. Repeat the next year. Name tags. Shortly after Columbine and all those other shootings peaked in frequency, it was supposed to keep outsiders from getting in the school unnoticed and shooting everyone but at the time people doing the shootings were always students. So we joked they were bulletproof. Some of my classmates won a bunch of money for our school. Our school was one of the lowest funded schools in the district. The district took the money and spent it on another school. Ha reminds me when I was a sophomore. My school was next in line to get renovations and upgrades. Only half classes even had air conditioning. Instead the district built a new school that took half of my graduating class. They also took teachers so my classes were still overcrowded. New TVs in the cafeteria that just show the morning announcements. They just need to send out announcements in an email. The large schoolyard at my school had a set of planters in the center. They were basically four triangles made of brick that pointed in at each other and created an X-shaped walkways between. The outside sides had a bench each attached. People would sit and chat to each other on the benches, teachers and students alike. There was very little litter or vandalism. The plants were kinda pretty insofar as any secondary schooler would care to notice. One year a duck made her nest in one of the planters and apart from a few oh hey a duck nest comments it was left alone. Then for some reason the school decided to rip the planters out. Took them two thirds of the school year to do it and blocked off the X walkway so everyone had to crush by on the outside lanes between classes. Everyone was super curious as to what the planters would be replaced by. Turns out, nothing. 
they simply bricked over the holes left by the planters and left it as a huge empty space. We didn't even get new benches so no one had anywhere to sit during break. People started to miss the plants since the lack of color left the whole area kinda bland. We also kept to the old X walkways and stepping over the former planters felt weird. iPads for the kindergarten. They were intended to have educational apps on them that kids could play on at end or recess. Believe it or not, most kindergartners would rather play on the swings or play with dolls and learn to write their name on an app. No one used them, no one liked them and they all broke within 2 months. HRRMM. My indoor recess at that age was the whole group using these big puzzle piece foam blocks to build castles and then crawl all over them. We would not have cared about the iPad either. Was on boys varsity soccer team in high school. New head coach, wanted to emphasize more analytical approach, and as such, had booster club by a $10,000 goalpost camera. None of the team liked the idea anyway, especially since the girls soccer team used their money for new jerseys and nicer balls and they still made it farther in their playoffs than we did almost every year. As it turns out, the coach couldn't figure out how to put the camera together, and we never used it. Biggest waste of $10,000 I've ever seen. When 65 inches TVs were like 4k dollars a pop they set about 8 of them around campus that just displayed the time. $4,000 clocks, not to mention whatever they used as a video source to send to the display. My son's current school sent out an email to parents announcing that they'd like to add voice projection to every class. He's in first grade and there are 20 kids in his class. Totally unnecessary. They had a demo session and it sounded horrible. When I was still a student, my school spent almost 200k to paint the roads outside our school. You read that right. Almost $200,000 of our precious tuition dollars to paint the roads outside blue and yellow. But to pour salt on this painful wound, the paint job didn't even make it through winter. So just to reiterate, $200,000 for 3 months of painted road. I think I'm still angry about it. That's gotta be the dumbest one I've read in here. A lot of them are dumb in that money was spent on technology or other things that wouldn't be used, but those at least keep some value after being bought. This is just throwing money away. My high school wasted a ton of money buying two golf carts. Their reasoning was it allowed staff to get to any dangerous scenes faster. Except we never had any accidents and they were mostly used for joy rides by the hall monitors. This seems like a crappy idea regardless. Driving golf carts indoors in a school sounds dangerous. Our new slick willy superintendent insisted on buying an educational product for $500,000 that consisted of software that nobody wanted or could use. It was from his girlfriend. Slick willy went to jail. One of the schools in our district paid an astronomical fee to an artist to create an artwork for the hall of the school. Paid for the dude's room and board for like a year and he produced a large polished piece of wood. No literally that's it. It was supposed to be shaped like a heart but it looks more like a butt and is now known as the butt. We had a thing we called the butt boob it's some kind of modern art apparently. My school just spent tens of millions of dollars on a remodel that includes a new commons and front office area, which were not needed, but no new classrooms, which were desperately needed. The old commons was warm, inviting, bright and beautiful. It wasn't old. The new commons is dark, cold, sterile and uninviting. The exterior was changed too. The entire front of the school used to be attractive. Now it looks like a prison. I think maybe the architect presented the design as a joke, but our principal liked it so the architect just rolled with it. Our mascot was a rocket, and a certain percentage of school construction money had to be spent on art. They spent $90 k commissioning a giant rocket sculpture for the main field entrance. When it was unveiled, the artist had made one tiny change to the design. Instead of a pointy rocket tip, he'd gone with a rounded, um, mushroom tip. I mean, we thought it was hilarious, especially when they cut off the tip as their solution to the problem, but nobody liked it. I'm a teacher. My first year, the school leader bought a ping pong table for the lounge in an attempt to make school more fun and relaxing. It simply became a surface to put copies on. It sounds like they had good intent it just didn't work out, and at least those tables aren't too expensive so it wasn't a crazy amount. 
Sun's elementary school PTO had an excess of funds. They decided to spend it on a buddy bench. A buddy bench is a bench that you can sit on if you want buddy. I theory it sounds like a decent idea except that it was placed in the hallway near the office and none of the kids wanted to be identified as someone who didn't have a friend. Nobody ever sits on it. This isn't common knowledge so I was really the only one incessant by it. But I worked for Cisco Foods as a baker at university, and the upper echelons of the administration had hired their own personal pastry chef to make these extravagant desserts for their meetings. The pastry chef was legit. She made absolutely amazing desserts of a wide variety every day, loaded them onto a cart, and with her baker's outfit and hat on would wheel it up to their daily administration meetings. Her salary was paid for by the students of the school, so that the administrators could dine on first class pastries and desserts made from scratch each day. She was really good at her job and actually helped me improve in the bakery, but I was so mad her job even existed simply to provide pastries to people who just sat around and decided how the school's money was spent. I obviously didn't make a stink about it to anyone because she was my friend and I wouldn't ever dream of putting her employment at risk, but I couldn't help feeling like her entire career was to make fat cats fatter and it just boiled my blood. I'm also going to assume, from my time in corporate event planning, that most of the pastries went to waste since even the fattest cat can't eat more than a couple of croissants and most people won't even touch them. TVs, like just random TVs in the hallway that showed slideshows and crap, tens of thousands of dollars when we could have just put up bulletin boards. My school has loads of TVs that I don't recall ever see turned on. Cameras installed in nearly every inch of the school. Not for student safety but because the school board didn't trust the kids. My school was miles behind other high schools. Old textbooks and sometimes not enough textbooks. Computers were junk. No in-school programs. They spent every ounce of money on cameras and putting the rest in the school board's pockets. Honestly, I feel you with the camera stuff. Mine had cameras pointed into the girls and boys locker rooms, and at one point in my sophomore year, tried putting one inside of the locker rooms. Long story short, one person covered the whole thing in duct tape and one senior took the whole thing out of the ceiling and put it in the dumpster. My high school spent a bunch of money on this system to play popular songs for the last minute of passing time between classes so we'd hear popular music and as a convenient way to know to get to your next class. Then they started playing Friday by Rebecca Black every Friday once. Then it was the only song on Fridays. Then it was the only song. Every day. Five times a day. Thank god that was my senior year. No idea if they still do it. Chaotic evil. Oh yes I'm prepared for this answer. My school's mascot was a knight, and it was rumored that the school had the choice of installing a pool at the high school, or to commission a large, think like 25 feet long, metal sculpture of a knight on a horse, and to hang it from the ceiling in the back hallway. They opted for the horse. I was waiting for Ken Hour to pop up on here. Seeing that stupid pile of scrap shoved into the rafters like an afterthought is something I won't miss. That place was fricked and I'm just happy I never have to go back. Especially if Smith is still the VP. Frick that guy. They bought flags of all the states and put them around this caged in area full of gravel. They caged in the gravel to stop students from walking across the gravel. They also bow flags in the school colors to line the fence around campus. Only thing is, we were in an area which can get very windy with zero windshields so those flags took a beating. By mid-year they were an ugly, ugly, frayed mess. Honorable mention was the bridge they built across the courtyard we weren't allowed to walk across that they eventually paved over. Shout out to the flag pole a kid did for Eagle Scouts that was taken down that same year by admin. And big shout out to the admin during my little sister's years there where they sealed off all the inner hallway doors and added extra doors outside to stop students from traveling between classes indoors. Don't know what that solved except adding extra minutes onto your travel time between class. $30,000 from 2 years of fundraising on an LED billboard about 10 feet off of a major road. It was so bright that it caused several accidents at night and had to be shut down about 8 months later because it was deemed a safety hazard. I hung out with several guys on the programming team and they figured out how to upload memes onto it. They couldn't figure out who did it so no one got in trouble. Slamming memes onto a huge billboard sounds like the dream. 
The school had a jewel raffle in which they had a raffle in which the person would win a bunch of money via gift cards, and to enter they had to give up their vape pens. It worked as well as you'd expect it to. In 2011 my college spent $32,000 to have Snooki come in as an inspirational speaker in some misguided attempt to connect with freshmen. Around the same time there was a growing student-led movement to make the school more affordable. The student board revolted. People confronted her during her speech. It was a glorious mess. I went to a Catholic school high school. Very few of the students were actually Catholic and went there because the local public school district was terrible. We won some contests or grant and the school said they would allow the students to pick what the money was spent on. The options were new flooring for the gym, renovate the courtyard next to the chapel into a prayer garden, or renovating the courtyard next to the cafeteria into an outdoor eating space. Most people voted for new gym floors, and some people voted for the outdoor eating space. I do not know of anyone who voted for the prayer garden. Guess what won? The prayer garden. People, even teachers, were furious as the voting was clearly rigged to give us the appearance of a choice. If they really wanted a prayer garden, they should have just done the work without putting it to a vote. The funny thing about the prayer garden is that they actually made it nice and put in benches and plants and whatnot. But it was always locked and never used. Administration would often say during tours oh look at our lovely prayer garden for students. They voted for it. Number. No we didn't. I love democracy. Murals in the bathrooms that replace the mirrors i7 workstation laptops with quadro gpus easily two thousand five hundred dollars plus each for an elementary k6 school those machines were designed for cad work and media production but were instead solely used for web browsing and microsoft word i don't have any idea why they bought them likely bought with grant money that had to be 100 percent spent i knew a guy who hopped between schools getting them all kind of out of the woodwork grants he would buy tons of tech and hire us to install it. There are some small schools that are loaded with nice tech. It was really cool emo. Laminated it cards that everyone had to wear around their necks on some dorky butt lanyard. No one freaking did it. So they made it punishable by detention. After that, half the students still didn't do it and the detention hall became so overwhelmed that they began to make backlogs. After a few weeks, not wearing a lanyard gave you a detention two months from then. Eventually, detention became so backlogged that students started doing more severe transgressions because they would have graduated before they could actually be forced to go to detention. After about a month, no one had to wear their id cards at all anymore. They said it was for security purposes, so no one could sneak into the school. The thing is, you could put literally anything in the lanyard, and no one would check if it was your actual student id card. I had a blank index card in mine and no one ever said anything to me. If someone actually wanted to sneak into the school, all they would need is a lanyard and no one would ever check if it's actually authentic or not. Why oh oh my school did that too. And if you didn't have your card you would have to wait to get lunch until the very end when there was almost no food left. It was the worst. Our school paid to cover a huge lot with cement just to have a ceremony on it announcing a new building. Then they tore it up two months later to start construction. My school's fees went towards having nice cement for press pictures. What a joke. My school wasted so much money on plastic ID cards that you were supposed to scan into every room to assure you were there and the IDs were also keys to get into the buildings. If you didn't have your card, you didn't get in and also get in school suspension. It wasn't a bad system BC you could easily take a photo of your ID to scan into rooms but you'd have to bum a buddy to get into a building. But once there were internet problems, the whole system would shut down and living in a rural wee town, you could expect wind and rain and tornadoes and all that fun junk. When I went to college the local NFL team paid for the school to go from a grass field to artificial turf. The school never said it was only half paid for by the team. My siblings had a whole year without paper, printers, no raises for staff, cutting school programs, and they slashed the art budget. The football team still got new uniforms that year though. My town got a brand new middle school, and somehow they spent 40k on a gained metal palm tree that they called, the learning tree. One of the chair people essentially commissioned it from a relative. 
so many of us were super pee. It didn't even have lights and there was no way to clean it so it just sat there like the gained waste of money it is just collecting dust. A graveyard. Instead of spending money on the students of the school, they decided that a graveyard would make them more money. Whenever I was in high school, my senior year, they decided to make technology improvements. So, they swapped a lot of old textbooks for iPads, they placed unnecessary TVs in the hallways. Waste of money. I don't understand the whole TV fixation thing. My science classroom in high school had a massive flat screen television which we rarely used for anything. Halfway through the year they took it out and put in an even bigger flat screen television that we never used for anything. Bailing out the son of the principal from jail with the grant money from the EU. Provided to renew the computer facility. I trust that principal had an embezzlement suit on her hands. Our high school was way too into our football team. One year they decided to replace our grass football field with a turf one. IDKY. But even the football players would tell me we had the best grass field in the area. I don't know why they replaced it. You know when high school football players say the school is spending too much money on them. Something is wrong. Turf is an upfront cost, but it's a lot cheaper to maintain over the long term. My country is still a developing country so many new technologies are not implemented and properly operated. Two years ago, my high school installed an id and a fingerprint scanner at the school main entrance gate so they can track whether the student came to school or not. Every student had to pay like 5-10 dollars to get a personal id card and get their fingerprint in the system. The principal was very serious with this the first week, then couple of weeks later, students started forgetting their id card. Some of them purposely annoyed the teachers as if they don't know how to use the machine or even put their fingers in the scanner. Then the machine started malfunctioning and eventually just stopped working one day and stood at the entrance gate. All dusty. A year later they did this again and stopped in a month. I don't know what's happening now. I remember it happened in Allen, TX. They got a bond issue to build a $50 million dollar stadium. Once it was done they had their final inspection and saw a big crack in the foundation. So basically the football team couldn't use it for the season due to the school district making the company repair it out their own pocket. It went back and forth and finally the company who did had to bite the bullet and do the repair. When I started secondary school, we had a canteen with proper home style food being served. Cooked fresh, real meat and vegetables, good portion sizes. All the students loved it, and it was well used. School decided to replace this with a fast food style set up with processed burgers and fries to try and appeal to the kids, and up the prices. 2. Within a month, nobody visited the canteen anymore. Practically every kid in the school started bringing food from home. It took 3 months till they changed everything back again. Massive expense for absolutely no reason. They bought a bunch of laptops for a magnet program. They were the worst laptops. My friend also didn't help by adjusting the battery settings to read critical at 98% and shut down. Epic. Instead of spending it on students, the butthole old people in my town decided to spend $400k on a sign for the front of the high school out of spite. There had already been a sign. My school buys so much useless things. Or at least when I went to. They dump all their money on the football team. Obviously the football team doesn't really care, but other people did. One thing that everyone has a common hatred for that the school bought, even the football team, is the inflatable the school got. From what I heard it costed about 4k. It's this big butt inflatable that people could walk through. The inflatable has the school's mascot on it and it's just plain weird. There were so many ways the school could have spent that money on but they choose to spend it on stupid inflatable that is only used like 3 times a year. Guess inflation screwed over their finances. 3D printer. Sounds great, and I guess it's pretty cool, but no one uses it except for the engineering class sometimes because you have to pay to use it, and it's just a generally inconvenient process. And yet they still try to advertise it to us literally every day. Like what do you want from me? I don't need a tiny plastic bench for $25. The university spent 40 motherfucking million dollars on a new building. And it's not even a top notch school or anything. They basically paid for a bunch of nonsense and computerized classes that no teacher used.
My university did the same thing for my final year. Whole new campus. I don't even remember how much they spent. Much smaller than the old one. Major network issues. Like 6 sexual assaults and 3 stabbings in the first few months because there were no lights and they built it right next to one of the shittiest areas in town. I could go on but I won't. Teachers of Reddit. How easy it to tell if a student has a crush on another? And what is the funniest saddest moment between the two you can share? High school teacher. Depending on the kids personalities, they either get louder or quieter when their crushes are present. The loud ones are freaking annoying. The quiet ones are the ones I would purposefully sit next to their crushes haha. <laughs> oh god. I just realized that my 66 year old gov teacher totally knows. Teenagers are not subtle by nature, but they are amazingly oblivious when it comes to matters of their heart. They are really perceptive with other things, though. The boys almost never recognize if a girl likes them, and the girls never realize a guy is showing interest. It's funny to watch it happen. It's so blatantly obvious as an outsider, but I remember being just as oblivious as a student. It's called crushing self-doubt. I had a girl literally ask me out and I slept on it and convinced myself she was just fricking with me in an attempt to embarrass me. Awkward story. My students are all between 8 and 10 and a few have noticeably hit the point where they are obviously starting to notice the opposite gender. I have two students that I'll give fake names. A boy, James, and a girl, Lucy, in my class. They are always together. Recess. Lunch time. Free choice. The two are always working together. They are both very shy and giggly and it seemed a mutual crush was there. Noted by me and their math teacher as well. One day, I hear James getting teased by some other kids for his crush on Lucy. His math teacher and I pull him aside and have a talk with him. We tell him that we'll be talking with the class as a whole about crushes and teasing. He's not the only one. His math teacher also tells him that, if he does have a crush on Lucy, it's nothing to be embarrassed about because she's a nice, sweet girl. James just looks awkward and asks to go so we let him. A few days later, I'm walking my kids out to the parent pickup and I see Lucy's dad is here to pick her up. James waves to both of them as they leave and I ask if he's been over to Lucy's house to play and if he knows her dad. Yay, miss. That's my uncle. Oh crap. I have encouraged cousin incest. I awkwardly gather my nerves and start to say, Ah, you remember that talk we had about Lucy and liking her? Ah well, I didn't realize she was your cousin so. I thought you didn't. That was weird, miss. Then he just laughed and said he liked a different girl anyway from his older sister's class. TL. DR. 10 year old is into cougars, not cousins. Gotta love that TL. DR. Anyways, I love the surprise ending. XD. One of my students father told me his son liked a girl in his kinda class. He said, she's pretty dad. She looks like a dragon. The dad laughed and said, we're gonna have to work on your compliments son. Oh man. The longing stares across the room. The almost creepy wistful what ifs you can just see in their eyes. When I was in middle school, that was me. I'm a bartender and this sounds like every guy in the bar after 1.30am. I'm a substitute teacher and my favorite student with a blatant crush experience was with a second grade class. I picked the kids up from the yard after recess and a boy came to me very upset because one of the girls had been chasing him the entire recess. Once we got back to class I talked with the girl, asking for her side of the story. Conversation went something like this. Me. Jose was pretty upset about something that happened this recess. Do you want to tell me what happened? Girl. We were playing. Me. He said you were chasing him. Is that true? Girl. Slight blush yeah. Me. Do you think he wanted you to be chasing him? Girl. Number. Me. If you knew he didn't want to be chased, why were you chasing him? Girl. Huge blush. Guilty smile. And hunched shoulders. He makes me laugh. That's adorable. I am teaching 7th grade right now. It's crazy easy to tell. It makes me wonder if I was that obvious when I was their age. Or worse, if there were girls that were that obvious towards me and I didn't notice. It's like, they don't even hide it. One of my boys carries a girl's books every day. It is clear to me that he has a crush on her. I learned recently that she has a different one of these guys to carry her books between every class. I mean, that's just manipulative. 
She's got to know, right, right? I have this one teacher that will totally just say anything that's on her mind. One she just flat out said do you guys like each other or what to these two kids in my class. But within 3 days they were dating and still are. That could have easily resulted in them being super embarrassed and avoiding each other forever. Band in high school is a funny place. Since kids are around each other a lot more of the time than the average student, they tend to get band goggles. It's pretty obvious to see relationships blossoming. More often than not it is a good thing but every now and then you get the older upperclassmen boys going after naive freshman girls. And boy oh boy does it turn ugly quick. The drama can be outrageous. Funniest most shocking moment. A girl who is an awesome student has been dating a true player on and off for the last year. She went so far to tell me that she got back together with him after he cheated on her. So literally last Friday, I'm sitting in the band hall watching kids practice. This sweet girl comes in the hall and is walking with a sense of purpose. As she passes me, she says something under her breath that I didn't quite get the first time. Confused by what she said, I watch her walk up to said guy. She grabs him by the shoulders and spins him around. She says something to which he responds with a short answer but had that look on his face that he got caught doing something he wasn't supposed to be doing. She then balls up her fist and socks the guy 4-5 times and storms off. At that point, I realized what she said. Skvanguard, you are going to have to write me an office referral. Best referral ever. It former and current promiscuous band nerds which I hope are not my students. Band drama can get pretty crazy at times. It's pretty fun to watch, mainly because I'm a youth and drama tends to avoid us. Also obligatory vanguard. I teach English. I remember a star football player senior coming into the room to rap with me for a bit before third period started every Friday. In my third period a female student junior of mine who was extremely intelligent and very pretty, yet somewhat shy being an AP student and all, was sitting in the front row and always stared at him when he came in. He would talk about football and stuff with me and every so often I'd look back at her still staring right at him and smiling the entire time. She would not turn that smile off no matter who was looking or what anyone said. It was actually one of the cutest saddest things I ever saw. Seeing as how the guy never even turned around to notice her. If he did, who knows, maybe they would have hit it off. Maybe they did after they weren't my students. Former 6th grade teacher here. I was there to witness one of my kids take his first big leap. At lunch, he asked the girl he had a crush on will you go on a date with me she smiled and said yes. Immediately the boy on the other side of her said don't go out with the sucker. Go out with me she smiled and said okay. Middle school is tough, man. Poor dong, he must have been devastated. I wasn't a teacher, I was a teaching helper, I mean it was only 6th grade, but it was extremely easy, looking at everyone facing you, you start to realize what people are focusing on. I know when kids are texting because they look straight at me and every 2 minutes look down for 2 seconds and have their hands under the table. For a crush it is the long stares at the back of their crush's head whilst fiddling with an object like a pencil or their hair. The the quick look away when the crush looks at them. It's easy. Sorry for question mark at first. I'm German and didn't know how to teaching helper correctly to say it. If anyone knows please comment or message me. I always got caught staring. I would try and pretend to be looking up and over their heads but I'm sure it was pretty obvious. It is painfully obvious most of the time. Here are some of the things I saw. Continuous glances at the same person. Body language that positions the person closer to the other person. Interjecting into a conversation that the person was not engaged in to begin with. Being helpful more so for a person than for anyone else in class. Flirting. Obviously. Boastful storytelling. A lot of times it is outlandish and very obviously untrue. Hanging around the other person uninvited and checking out the other person while oblivious to their surroundings. What is funny is that most people think they are being sneaky or inconspicuous. From my vintage point in the front of the classroom, these things seemed so obvious as to be genuinely painful to observe. It was especially painful when the feelings were intentionally unreciprocated. I taught college for a bit. I'm not a teacher, but in 6th grade, 2002, a girl in my class history with Mrs. Thompson, 
sat in the next row over from me every day. I was crushing on another girl and ignorant to the fact that she liked me. Midwinter, Mrs. Thompson is handing back papers and stops between the two of us while glancing back and forth between the two of us and says something along the lines of I don't know who to give this paper back to, her first name, or Mr. My last name, Mrs. Thompson hands the paper back to her. She had been practicing writing her name with my last name so much in her notebook, apparently like many teenage girls do, that she had accidentally written it on homework she handed in. And six years later at my high school graduation, a half dozen of my former teachers including Mrs. Thompson were sitting around talking with my friends and me and brought up that paper where a girl had written my last name on her paper. They found it cute and endearing and told other various stories of middle school love. A year and a half ago, I married that girl, TL, DR. My wife is omniscient, don't tell her I said that. She already knows. College Perspective I can usually tell which of my students have hooked up. I can almost always tell when girls are crushing on guys in my classes. It's usually painfully obvious, especially from the perspective of the front of the room. I can also tell that you're texting, no matter how much you work to camouflage it. Sometimes when I assign group work of any kind, I like to intentionally split up or subvert the secret love bads just to see how they react. I'm a bit of a sadist like that. Oh. Freshman, all pheromones, alcohol, performance over confidence, and a complete lack of experience with the real world. Such fun. Just found this guy, you college math chef, below. Comma I can definitely tell, and I always sit the awkward shy ones with their crushes. Some would call me a guardian angel. It's like I'm his evil doppelganger or something. I work in a college and teach early morning classes to 17 24 year olds. Mostly, it is painfully obvious who just did a walk of shame to class and occasionally who is fricking someone else in the room. The most awkward thing that ever happened was some guy who came into the class and interrupted a lecture to hit on a girl in the front row. He wasn't even a student, just some sucker who walked by our open campus and recognized the girl through the window as the girl who he saw at Jack in the Box a week earlier. More details on the second story. He comes in and just starts talking to her. I am in such shock that this guy just randomly walked in, I was speechless, and just stood there watching it. After about a minute I came to my senses and realized the situation. Here is this 40 plus year old dude, tatted up with his pants hanging from his butt, reacting off booze and cigarettes at 9am, hitting on a very uncomfortable looking tiny blonde 18 year old. I tell him that this is my classroom and that I wouldn't have him interrupting. He would have to go. He didn't put up a fight, just asked when class was over so he could come back to mac him some. I told him we were out at noon. We were really done by 10 and that was the last day of class, the day of the final. A week later, in a different room, I kept my eyes open, but he never showed. I asked the student but she only knew him from a single instance of standing in line in front of him at Jack in the Box. He doesn't even go here. I teach 16 year olds. When a girl likes a guy she'll draw hearts on his notes. When a guy likes a girl he'll draw dongs on her notes. A couple met in my HS chemistry classroom. This was 3 years ago. He was a junior in HS. She was a sophomore. They told me last fall that when the date is set, I'll be invited to the wedding. Best example of chemistry ever. You could say I was the one teaching chemistry, but actually, it was them who taught me it. This actually happened in my acting class just today. Our teacher said he had an exercise to show us how much subtext there is under the surface of our actions. Pick a person in here who you have something you desperately want to say something to and never could. Think about it really hard and don't make eye contact with them or they'll know. Everyone in the class knows each other very well. There is a lot of dirt to stir up. The silence was deep and uncomfortable. Now, go ahead and say it. You could hear the buttholes pucker. People looked numb with fear and hesitation. The teacher, having proved his point about rich subtext, opened his mouth to end the exercise before anyone could actually speak. Now, just then, a kid jumped up from his chair arduously and let loose with, Sadie, you're hot as heck and I want to frick your brains out. 
The room exploded. The end of the story. The result was pandemonium. One kid was laughing so hard he nearly tipped his desk right over onto the floor. The teacher was in shock. The kid was red in the face and laughing uneasily. The amazing thing was the girl. She didn't smile. Didn't acknowledge it. Nothing. She sat there. Stock still. Like Marie Antoinette at the guillotine. Totally above the situation. I think she must have been mortified and didn't know what to do. The teacher's response. I have been doing that exercise for decades. And no one has ever actually said anything. The next day. I crap you not. Read it. Saw this kid and Sadie walk in today. A little apart. Both grinning. He was listening to a song on her iPod. They both fell asleep in class. Great success. Teacher of high school freshman here. It's very easy. Saddest story. Two houses. Both alike. Sorry. It was a couple years ago. Girl was quiet. Charming. And very bright. Boy was disruptive. But the good kind of disruptive. The pleasure to have in class disruptive. Very funny. It became very clear to me that she was crushing on him something fierce. I, for what it was worth, blessed this potential union. This went on for several months. Then, one day, she storms into my room in a huff, declaring her anger at him. As I'm going around the room later that day, I catch him writing a lengthy letter to her. At a glance, it explained how he thought she was a really nice girl and all, but it would be perhaps best if they remained only friends. I assume she had made a move. It didn't pay off. Over the next few days, I saw more mournful and longing looks than I ever wanted. Each one broke my heart. By the end of the year, they had patched it up. Yet, I still caught the occasional twinge of sadness in her eye. She may still hope to this day. And I, I still hope too. I think I just read a premise to an animated film. I teach kindergarten. Yes, they get crushes. Two, they're completely incapable of hiding them because they haven't yet learned shame. I had a class with six girls and only one boy. One of the girls always played with the boy. Their moms are good friends. So they also do many things together outside of school. At lunch, the girl would talk about how many times she had kissed the boy at soccer practice and how they were going to get married. It was absolutely adorable. Then, one day, I got a new student. Another boy. I can't even tell you how excited my first little guy was to finally have another boy to play with. He expected the new boy would feel the same way and immediately want to be his best friend. Unfortunately for him, the new boy wanted to be friends with everyone, including the girls. Not only did my original boy have to share his new friend, but his little girlfriend started flirting hardcore with the new boy and forgot about him almost completely. He started getting madder and madder. I had to work very hard during playtime to make sure he didn't feel left out. It was a very hard time for him. Luckily, the new boy was only around for a short time. Everything went back to normal when he left. Next time on Friends. This is one of my most treasured memories as a teacher. I was a student teacher, so I was not prepared for this. I asked my students to write and share their own poetry. We focused on sensory imagery, and I had the presentation staged at the local university for a bit more gravitas. Some were funny. Some were surprisingly beautiful, but most were banal, and the exercise was mostly boring. This one girl got up in front of the class visibly shaking. She was near tears for her entire poem. I wanted to help her, but I had no idea what to do. So I just watched like everyone else as she poured her heart out to a boy in the class who did not reciprocate. When she finished, there was a silence in the room, and after a few seconds which seemed to stretch out forever, one of her friends stood up and ushered her out of class as the tears began to flow. Nobody made fun of her, but the boy also didn't show that he felt the same. It was just out there with no commentary. It is to this day one of the bravest acts I have ever witnessed. I wonder what that boy was thinking. Frick, everybody is going to think him a douche. Daycare teacher to kid 611 here. It is probably one of the easiest things to pick up on. They try to play with the other, but they don't openly admit to it. They spend a lot of time near the other, without ever actually talking to them. They sit at the same table, but try to talk to different friends. Basically, they spend as much time with the other as possible without actually becoming friends. If anything about crushes is mentioned, they immediately try to direct the conversation so people talk about them and their crush. 
and the second the two are mentioned together, the crusher blushes. Not to brag, but, I have this 10 year old that has a pretty obvious crush on me, I mean, I'm a teenage male who spends 20 hours a week with her, so it is entirely understandable. I should mention that I don't encourage it or anything, I treat her like all the others. Granted, she is one of the oldest, so she does have more responsibility and she is able to have deeper conversations, but, she tries to make my life easy, she will help clean cook and take care of the younger kids. She does it to impress me and I sincerely appreciate it. I will say again that it is completely normal. I had crushes on babysitters, so do we all. I feel kind of bad for her now, because she puts a lot into it, but I know she'll smile looking back on it as an adult. There is another kid who is, 6 maybe 7 now, who has a crush on one of the 9 year olds. I mean, they are not entirely on the same level mentally. 1st grade and 3rd grade are about as far apart as 3rd grade and 9th grade, night and day. So it is kind of sad because he is chasing after her. She knows, I think, about the crush and it makes her a little uncomfortable but she is sweet about it. In my high school there was the rumor that the teachers would talk in their break room and try to pair people up in their classes for prom. They didn't do jack for me so frick them. In class on Sunday, a 5 year old boy said to a girl, Kyla your eyes match the flower in your hair. One of the cutest things I've ever heard. She smiled and blushed. And the guy next to me looked at me and said, that kid has got moves. Roses were in her hair. She is Satan. I teach 10th graders. When I was student teaching at age 21, I was really well liked and the students told me a lot of personal stuff. Probably because my age made me more approachable to 15 stroke 16 year olds. One girl. C. Would spend her study hall in my classroom during my planning period along with about 5 other students who just wanted to get out of study hall. She told me that she liked a boy, S. Who also hung out in my classroom at that time. From then on, I used to group them together in class on purpose to get her to talk to him and give them an opportunity to spend some time together. I would always encourage her to ask him to hang out or tell her about things he was interested in so she could start conversations with him about it. She loved him. I think he saw her as a friend but was generally clueless about her feelings. The saddest moment between the two of them was during my planning period their study hall. Some of the other kids that hung out in my room during that time were off running errands for me. So it was just C, S, and I in the classroom. C was a pretty overweight girl, and she was sitting on the desk part of those dumb classroom desks, and the desk completely gave out, breaking and sending her falling to the ground. I immediately shooed S out of the room, sending him to get the maintenance guy to get the desk out. When S was gone, C started bawling and was absolutely mortified. I knew she would be, which is why I sent S away quickly. I talked her through her embarrassment and by the time S got back, C was cool as a freaking cucumber and totally brushed it off. We went back to normal conversation and I'm sure S forgot about it within minutes. My student teaching ended about a month later. So I'm not sure if anything became of C and S but I definitely still think about them sometimes. I'd like to think I was just doing what any teacher would do in that situation. But I know that there is an unfortunate number of teachers who wouldn't have responded the same way I did. I just remember what it was like to be 15 years old. And I've had a few teachers who treated me as kindly as I treated C so I'm just paying it forward and doing my job. C. S. And I. Looks like that combination of letters. Rings a bell. It's incredibly easy for me to tell. And after I know I make it a point to sit the kids next to each other if I think they'll make a cute couple produce adorable offspring in the future. The world needs more cute couples kids. You're welcome. I've taught many different age levels. And their crushes are all pretty obvious. My favorites. Kindergarten boy throwing himself on floor with glee. I don't know what's going on with these girls, but I love it. Fifth grader matter of factly saying, Listen, I have a crush on Connor, so if you could move my desk by his, I would appreciate that. And one of my students using lunch on a field trip to ask a girl on a pizza date. She accepted and he wore extra nice clothes. They sat at their own table, making conversation in their own world. All of the adult women chaperones were very impressed. My god. All those times when the teachers arbitrarily rearranged the desks, now I wonder if there was something going on that I was unaware of. 
If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.